Hey, what's going on? It's Mike, and I'm here with another episode of Smart Simple Digital. And today, I'm gonna show you how to create, or should I say how to host your very own Zoom meeting. Now, if you're still relatively new to Zoom and the concept of participating in a virtual meeting, then I highly recommend that you go back and take a look at my previous episode where I walk through all the steps of joining a Zoom meeting for the first time, and where I also cover some basic tips that are important for you to know if you're just getting started with Zoom. However, if you're all set with the basics and you're ready to host your first Zoom meeting, I was born ready. Then this episode is for you. There are three main points that I'm gonna cover today. Uh, first up, I'm gonna give you an overview of creating a Zoom account, which is absolutely essential for scheduling and hosting meetings. Uh, next, I'm gonna show you how to, how to schedule a Zoom meeting. And there are a couple different ways that you can do that uh, through the Zoom website, the desktop app, and the mobile app. I'm gonna go through all three. And then last, I'm gonna share a few tips and some other things that are good to know and that you should be aware of whenever you are scheduling a Zoom meeting or when you're gonna be the host of one. Now, just a quick reminder, if you haven't done it already, go ahead and consider subscribing to my channel, especially if you are a, a returning viewer or if you just dig the content that I put out, you should go ahead and subscribe. And if you do that, every time that I put out a new video, you will get a notification. So just go ahead and click down below on that subscribe button. So with that said, let's get started. Let's do this. So creating a Zoom account is actually pretty simple. Now the first thing that you wanna do is to head over to the Zoom website and then click on the sign up button. And once you do that, you're just gonna follow all of the on-screen instructions. Now during the sign up process, you can also choose a subscription plan. Now there are a couple different plans available for you to choose, including one that is absolutely free. However, keep in mind with the free plan, Meetings that will include more than three participants are limited to 40 minutes. So if you need to host a, a large meeting, you know, with a group of three people or more, and the duration needs to extend for more than 40 minutes, then you should probably consider signing up for one of the premium plans that Zoom offers. Now, once you've decided on a plan and you've created your Zoom account, you're really all done with one of the most important steps that's necessary for you to begin hosting and scheduling Zoom meetings of your own. It's gonna be a piece of cake. So there are several different ways that you can schedule a Zoom meeting, uh, but today I'm just gonna cover three of them. So scheduling a meeting through the Zoom website, through the Zoom desktop app on your computer, and then through the Zoom a mobile app on your smartphone or your tablet. So I'm gonna run through all three options. Uh, and as you'll see, as I go through each, the process is really similar. They're all really similar to each other. Uh, and then going forward, you can decide to use whichever method works best for you. So first up is scheduling a meeting through the Zoom website. So the first thing that you'll want to do here is head over to the Zoom site and sign in to your account. Now, in order to do that, you'll just click on the sign in link near the top of the page, and then you'll be prompted to enter your username and a password. Now, once you've done that, once you've logged into your account, you should be automatically directed to the meetings page. Now, if that doesn't happen, just go ahead and click on the link in the sidebar that says meetings and you'll be taken to the right page. Now, once you're here, uh, you wanna click on the button that says schedule a new meeting. Now, alternatively, you can click on the link near the top of the screen that says schedule a meeting. Uh, both of these will take you to the right place. Now, at this point, you'll be taken to a screen where you can enter in all the details about the meeting that you want to schedule, the meeting that you're gonna be hosting. So just to go down the list here, first up there is topic. Now this is the name of the meeting. You can enter anything that you want to here, but just keep in mind that whatever name you enter here, this is the name that is also gonna appear on the invite that you send out to your meeting guest. Now, next up is description. Now, this field is optional, uh, but if you'd like, you can enter a brief summary that will explain to your guests what this meeting is all about. Now, next up is when. So this is where you'll enter the date and time that you want your meeting to occur. Next is duration. This is where you'll enter the length of time that your meeting is planned to take place. Now, keep in mind, if you have a free account and your meeting uh, is gonna include more than three guests, 
then this meeting, your meeting, can only last a total of 40 minutes. Time's up. Now, if you need your meeting to extend uh, for longer than that, then you wanna consider upgrading to one of Zoom's premium plans. Next up here is time zone. Now this one is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you just wanna select the time zone that corresponds to where you are in the world uh, or the local time that your meeting should follow. Now you can also choose here if you want this to be a recurring meeting. Now to do that, you just wanna click on the, the corresponding checkbox uh, and, and then you'll be prompted to make all the necessary selections. So for instance, you can set how often the meeting should occur uh, and if there's an end date. Uh, but if this, if this is just a one-time meeting, then you can just leave this box unchecked. Next up is meeting ID. Now this controls the unique numerical identifier that will be applied to your meeting. Now you can, you can think of this as a, let's say a, a room number or an access code. Uh, every Zoom account is assigned its own personal meeting ID number. Now, it's a good idea to leave this option set to generate automatically. I, I like to do that. And what happens is um, every time that you create a meeting, it's gonna be assigned its own unique number. Now this just helps to make your meetings a little bit more secure and it can also help to keep out any unwanted guests. How did you get in here? Uh, otherwise, if you just choose uh, personal meeting ID, what's going to happen is all of your meetings will have the same ID number. And let's say you have a meeting today and um, you also may have had a meeting last week or you have one the week uh, the week ahead and they all have the same personal meeting ID number, but maybe they have all different uh, people. They have all different people are, are invited. If somebody from the, the meeting from the week before or the previous week just happened to go back into that invite and they click on the link to join that meeting, they're going to be taken into your current meeting because it shares the same personal ID as the past meeting or the, the future meeting. I hope that makes sense. But either way, again, I just always think it's just a good practice just to assign a unique ID to every meeting that you create. Next is security. Now this option is set by default and what it does is it applies a unique passcode the guests will have to enter to join your meeting. Now this passcode is also gonna be included in the invite that you send out to your guests. And you can also choose here if you want your meeting to include a waiting room. Uh, and with the waiting room, when people join your meeting, they won't automatically uh, enter into the, the, the meeting in progress. Um, and so it doesn't, it doesn't actually hurt to enable this option. I like to sometimes enable it uh, if I want to just have an additional layer of security um, on the meetings. And it also just helps to avoid any meeting disruptions as well. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind though, is that if you do have the waiting room enabled, you as the meeting host will just have to keep an eye out for alerts during the meeting. So every time that somebody wants to join, wants to join as your, meet, as your meeting is getting started, um, even when the meeting is in progress, as new, as new guests join, uh, you'll get a notification and you'll have to allow them in each time. So there's just one thing to keep in mind there. Uh, if you don't want to have a waiting room, you don't have to, it's totally optional. You just want to uh, uncheck this box here. Now next up is video. Now this controls whether or not your webcam or your guest webcams are turned on or turned off automatically as they enter into your meeting. So just as a courtesy, I like to keep this option set to off. Um, and I do that because many times when you're on a, on a video call, as soon as you join, a lot of us, you're still maybe trying to get your volume correct, still maybe trying to position your webcam in the right place. And so, as, you know, as a way to not catch people off guard, look away! I just like to keep their camera set to off so that way they are able to get themselves situated and everything straightened out um, and then they can turn their camera on when they're ready. Now next up is meeting options. And the first one here is enable join before host. Now this is a good option to check if you are okay with the meeting starting before you as the host actually enter into the meeting. Uh, this might be good if you you know have a discussion, a group discussion where everybody's taking part and you, it's not important for you as a host to be there to kick things off. However, if this box is not checked, the meeting will only start when you as the host join. And before you get there, your guests are just gonna be waiting. They're just gonna be in the waiting room waiting for that meeting to start when you get there. We're waiting. 
Next is mute participants upon entry. Now this is this is a good one uh, to use. I like I like to keep this one checked um, because it just helps to avoid meetings being disrupted by any background noises. What is that noise in the background? As guests are joining the meetings. And so what it does is it, it will make sure that everyone's microphones are on mute from the very beginning when they enter into the meeting. However, uh, when people want to speak, you know, they also have the option to unmute themselves. But again, just as people are getting started, as they're coming into the room, their mics are going to be muted. Just to avoid any background noise, just throwing things off. And next is record the meeting automatically on the local computer. Uh, I generally keep this one unchecked, but you can check it if you want this meeting to automatically uh, record from the second that it starts. If you do check this option though, I, I highly suggest that you, you know, you give your guests some advance warning that the meeting will be recorded. So maybe include that in your invite. You are being recorded. But one thing to keep in mind though, is if you don't select this option and you do want to record your meeting, you can always do that from, um, from any meeting that's in progress. You'll have that option. But again, um, it's just always good practice just to give your guests some type of advance warning. Uh, about the, the possibility of your meeting being recorded. Now, once you've entered all these meeting details, you just wanna click on the save button. And doing this will officially book your meeting, it will schedule your meeting, and uh, you'll also be directed to a page where you can review all the details that you've entered. And this just gives you uh, another opportunity just to look over everything and to make sure that all the details and all the settings are correct. Now from this details page, you will also have a couple options that you can use to invite people to join your meeting. Now the first option here uh, gives you the ability to add your meeting to a calendar. Now this step is optional, but it is pretty handy, especially if you use an online calendar such as Google, uh, Outlook, or Yahoo. So if you do, you can go ahead and just click on the button that corresponds to the, the calendar service that you use. And when you do this, it will create an appointment on that calendar. And from that step, you can also add guests to your meeting invite. So if you already use a calendar like Google or Outlook, and you're familiar already with how to create a, a meeting invite and how to add guests, this option may be good for you to use and, uh, and, and invite other people to join uh, your Zoom meeting. And there's one other option that you have on the meetings details page uh, that you can use to invite people to join your meeting. And that option is the invite link. Now you can copy this link and then paste it into an email and send it out to your guests. And with that, your guests will have everything that they need in order to join the meeting that you've scheduled on the day and time uh, when it's set to take place. You know, they'll they'll have access to the, the link, the access code, the date, time, et cetera, all that information will be included in the invite that gets sent out. So the second way that you can schedule a Zoom meeting is through the Zoom app on your Mac or Windows computer. Now the first thing that you need to do if you haven't done that already is to download the Zoom app. Now in order to do that, you want to go to the Zoom website and then you can scroll all the way down to the bottom of the screen. You wanna look for a section labeled download. And when you see that, go ahead and click on meetings client. You can also just go ahead and go to the, the download, directly to the download page, and I will include a link below, and you'll just locate the item labeled Zoom Client for Meetings. And then you're gonna, you're gonna click on the download button, and this is gonna save a file to your computer. I'm not gonna walk through the whole process here, but you then just wanna locate where that file has been saved in your computer, click it, and it's gonna run you through a whole installation process. Now, once you have that app installed on your computer, you wanna go ahead and open it up. Now, if you are prompted to log in, just enter the username and password that you created when you first created your Zoom account. And then you'll be taken to the app's home screen. Now, once you're on the home screen, go ahead and click on the schedule button. Now, on the screen that appears, you want to enter in all the details about the meeting that you want to schedule, just as we did in the previous section. So you're going to enter a name for your meeting, the date, time, etc. And then when you're all done, just go ahead and click on the schedule button. Now, depending on how your computer is scheduled, when you click on the schedule button, this might actually cause uh, the calendar app 
that's installed on your computer or the one that you, you may use, uh, this may call, cause it to open up. So for instance, uh, if you have Outlook installed um, or if you're signed into Google Calendar, those things may open up. If that happens, then you'll be prompted to, to go through the steps of creating a meeting invite and the details for your Zoom meeting will already be populated in that invite. And you can also go ahead and add in the guest as well if you want to. Another way that you can create an invite, a meeting invite from within the, the Zoom desktop app is by clicking on the meetings button. Now when you do this, this is gonna take you to a list where you can see all the meetings that you've scheduled so far or just this one meeting if this is the first one that you've scheduled. Uh, and then from there you can select the meeting that you wanna invite people to. And then you wanna then click where it says copy invitation. Now after you do this, you can then paste the details. You can paste those invite details into an email or whatever communications channel that, you, that it is that you wanna use uh, to share the invite with your meeting guest. And the third way that you can schedule a Zoom meeting is through the Zoom app on your mobile phone or tablet. Now the first thing that you wanna do here if you haven't done it already is to download the Zoom app. Now for iPhone or iPad users, you can find the app in the App Store and for Android users, you can find the app in the Google Play Store. Now you may notice several other apps available from Zoom or that appear to be available from Zoom, but you wanna get the one that's labeled Zoom Cloud Meetings. Now, once you have that app installed on your mobile phone or your tablet, go ahead and open it. If you're prompted to, to log in, just go ahead and enter the username and password that you created when you first set up your Zoom account and then you'll be taken to the app's home screen. Now, if you've been following along up to this point in this video, uh, you'll notice many of the same options here in the mobile app that were also included in the web and desktop versions of the app that I covered earlier in the episode. Oh, I see. And so the overall process of scheduling a meeting is the same here as well. To get started, you just wanna click on the schedule button and on the page that appears, go ahead and fill in all the details about the meeting that you want to create, that you want to schedule. So you're going to enter in the name for your meeting, the day, time, etc. And when you're done, you're going to click on the save button. And that is it. Your meeting is scheduled. It is created. Now, the next thing that you want to do in order to invite people, uh, you'll want to click on the meetings button. This is going to take you to an area where you can see that meeting that you just created. And then we're going to just tap on the meeting that you want to add, that you want to add people to, that you want to invite people to. And then you want to select where it says add invitees. Now from this point, you can choose to send the invitation as a text, uh, or you can go ahead and click on copy to clipboard. And then you can open up your email or any other app that you want to that you use to communicate with people with, and then you can paste in the meeting details and share them with all of your guests. So that is it, that is everything that you need to know in order to schedule and host your first Zoom meeting. So again, you can, you can schedule a meeting through the Zoom website, through the Zoom desktop app, and also through the mobile app on your smartphone or your tablet. If you have any questions as you are uh, trying to create, trying to schedule, trying to host, uh, your first Zoom meeting, go ahead and drop them down below in the comments and I will definitely get back to you. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, go ahead and like it and also share it. You know, share it with someone else or another group of people who might be able to benefit from this information. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Take care.